Good evening and welcome to your evening news bulletin with Television Tongan News. Looking at today's headlines, Her Majesty Queen Anasbao will highlight the importance of the International Day of Prayer theme, Streams of the Desert for the People of Tonga. Parliament to resume with its normal deliberation on March 24th. Up to 6 million baanga, the required amount for the renovation work needed by the Free Wednesday Church for its hard by relief efforts. And Tonga Met Office has recorded the extreme amount of rainfall for the month of March, just within the first week of the month. These are more stories, together with news from around the region, sports, and the weather, weather bulletin later on. Now, for the news in details, I'm Kalolaine Tonglava Paletua. Her Majesty the Queen, Nanas Bau, in her spiritual encouragement during a special prayer service to mark International Day of Prayer in Nukalofa today, highlighted the theme of the day, Streams of the Desert, which is the 2014 theme for the International Day of Prayer. The International Day of Prayer is marked all over the world, Tonga included. We'll join Anasil Falekaono with the details. In Her Majesty Queen Nanasipao's address, she highlighted the importance of the theme Streams of the Desert for both men and women in Tonga. Her Majesty focused her spiritual encouragement on the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 42. Queen Nanasipao told the gathering the famous story on the Bible about Jesus and the Sumerian woman beside the well. Her Majesty says, when Jesus met the Sumerian woman beside the well, he wanted to help her free her spirit as he knew deep down the situation she was in. In Her Majesty's spiritual address, she also urged the women who attended the program on the importance of the spirits of both women and men as living streams are from God. Jesus was looking at the Sumerian woman sitting next to the water well. He focused on saving the spirit of the woman because he knew the hardship she was in. Although there were boundaries, but Jesus was willing to help and save her by being her salvation. Queen Nasibao stressed, when streams flow from God, women and men will never thirst again because hardships and challenges that they used to face will no longer burden them. However, the living streams will set them free. Her Majesty also says the women of Egypt are trying to tell all the women in the world they are living a stream that everyone should search for and drink from it and never thirst again. The streams are always flowing, which is already stated in the Bible. Whoever drinks from it shall never thirst again. All the hardships will be gone. Jesus will be able to break all the boundaries because He wants us to be the living streams and He will give us and grant us with the everlasting life. Attending this morning's prayer service was Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafile Opilole Butuita, which was held at the Catholic Church of St. Anthony of Padua in Nuku'alofa. The Bishop of the Roman Catholic Church Diocese of Tonga in New Ways, Hone Padita Pani Mafi, was also present at the early prayer ceremony together with many women from different walks of life. This year's theme was prepared by the women from Egypt before it was distributed to all women's organizations all over the world. The Women's Catholic League organized and hosted this year's program. Meanwhile, International Women's Day will be marked tomorrow, March 8th. For Television Tonga News, I'm Anasifalegaono. Although Her Majesty Queen Anasbao's official royal birthday is marked tomorrow, March 8th, the people from Lord Vyas Estate of Homa we're pleased to present a traditional haunga to Her Majesty's residence in Liukawa this afternoon. That's part of the preparations for the Queen's 60th Royal Birthday celebrations. According to information from the District Officer Sione Nukukata, the traditional presentation of the haunga was presented at 3 p.m. this afternoon. According to Mr. Kata, Lord Vaya, the estate holder, led today's procession and also performed Homa's traditional tongue and dance known as the Gailao. Another traditional item was performed from the youth of the village together with the Milo Tong and Gava Club from Homa. The prayer service was led by former church minister from the Free Wednesday Church, Reverend Tava Tupo, and talking chief Faiba Malie presented the Ha Unga. 
Parliament will resume with its normal deliberation on March 24, 2014, since its break on October last year. The House will continue to discuss its remaining agenda from last year and other bills to be submitted for further discussions among members of the House. A report from the Legislative Assembly stated that a soft closing of the Parliament will be conducted on April 3, 2014, before the official opening of the 2014 Parliamentary Session on June 5, 2014. The House is expected to start with the discussion of budget for the new financial year straight after the official opening. The President of the Free Wednesday Church of Tonga, Rev. Dr. Ahio, together with the Church Special Fund Committee for its Hawaii Relief Assistance known as the Tekina Imoana, have confirmed that up to 6 million paanga is required for its renovation operations in Hapai. Fononga Vekoso tells you more. The 6 million paanga is needed to fund the renovation work and rebuilding of destroyed church buildings, residential home for church ministers, church halls, and any other church residents in Hapai. This amount was confirmed due to the findings of a survey conducted on the island after the tropical cyclone Ian's devastating visit on January. According to the president of the Free Wesleyan Church, Reverend Dr. Ahio, the purpose of establishing the special committee, and named as the Tekina Imoana, which means lost in the ocean, only aims at the assisting and the affected church members in Hapai. The renovation work and constructions will start off with the project of building or renovating church buildings, as it is the important meeting place for church members to carry out their roles to God. The president of the Free Wesleyan Church says it is important for all the church members to work hand in hand in trying to provide assistance for the affected families in Hapai. This program we are not forcing the people of the church to donate any money, but with this project I believe that working together is much needed so that we are able to achieve the main purpose of forming the special committee. Meanwhile, the Secretary General of the Church, Reverend Dr. David Ahavea, says they have received a donation of 18,000 paanga from church members in Samoa. Last week we received donation from the church members in Samoa and also some donations from trustees of various churches in Tonga. Meanwhile, a member from the Free Wesleyan Church, Tau Atevalu, says they are hoping every member would know about the fundraising drive and provide assistance. The church have begun its work in the Hawaii group of islands and have also started raising funds to assist the operation. For Television Tonga News, I'm Fonoe Koso. Tourism sector is one of the smallest sectors in the country. However, it contributes to the country's economy. The Honorable Minister for Commerce, Tourism and Labor, Dr. William Ladu, re-emphasized this in a special consultation for tourist-related tourist sectors this morning. In his remarks at the Regional Tourism Strategy 2015-2019 consultation in Nukalofa, the Minister of Tourism urged all the related sectors to network and pave the way to improve the tourism industry in the country. The consultation workshop was held at the Vina House this morning. Sinlato with more on that story. The half-day consultation was facilitated by the project manager of the Pacific Regional Tourism Capacity Building Program, Chris Cocker. Mr. Cocker told Radio Tonga News this morning they are hoping the tour operators and related stakeholders in the tourism industry will voice out concerns and issues about tourism and also look at the strategy. I think in terms of the aviation side, which is a very crucial issue to our Pacific Island countries, one of the recommendations is to encourage and develop other hubs in the Pacific. And when I say hubs, because Nandi, Fiji is a hub. So if we can develop further hubs around the Pacific, it will feed more access into the Pacific. And I'm just sort of talk, speaking out of speaking wild here. It can be a, a, a hub in, in PNG to try and feed in the Asian markets, etc. And then from these hubs, they will feed the island countries because um, the intra-regional 
uh, air access is very poor. Uh, the frequency is not good. It's very expensive, so there must be a way forward in this case. The program manager of PRTCBP also stressed that tourism is the backbone of a country's economy and also called on the government to support the industry. As we look around our neighbours, the countries who have been successful in terms of tourism development and promotion are those who have governments who are strongly supportive of the sector and have put the sector as a priority. And I probably think that Tonga is moving towards it because there are new developments. When we say priority, it's not on paper, but it's in terms of providing support in resources like manpower and budgets, in this case, in supporting it. And I think it's very important because, as in a nutshell, the private sector is the key focus in each country because it's the engines of our economy. The consultation is conducted in almost all the 10 member countries of the South Pacific Tourism Organization, including Tonga. The program is funded by the European Union. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sini Lato. Next week, a review will be held to confirm Tonga's situation on the issue of human rights. Included in the review is Tonga's weakness on the issue and also international treaties in relation with human rights. Sini Lato again with more on that story. In an interview with the Solicitor General, Aminyasi Gefu, he says that the consultation is part of the work conducted by government to develop, protect and promote human rights. It is the purpose of a week-long consultation to be held next week in Nukolofa. The Solicitor General says Tonga had its second universal periodical review last year and the country is in a suitable condition in regards to human rights. We're in a fairly satisfactory state, but there's still a lot of work, uh, mainly on the administrative side, uh, uh, in order to improve on and, and the operational side uh, with regards to human rights, uh, protection, promotion and advocacy. He also said that with comparison to international treaties on human rights, Tonga still needs improvement. As you're aware, the, the siding, uh, that's one of the, the weaknesses of Tonga's uh, um, compliance with the international standards with regards to human rights is that uh, we haven't signed up to a, a number of core uh, treaties. And the reason is because uh, a few of them uh, still needs to be a bit, uh, to, there still needs to be dialogue with regards to the implications on, on Tonga and the Tongan people, uh, particularly our culture and our social uh, values and also our religious values. The public and private sectors together with the human rights advocacy institutions and organisations from abroad will take part in the week-long consultation next week. Tonga Met's office in Whamotu has recorded the extreme rainfall for the month of March, which exceeded the average amount of rainfall expected for this month alone. The Met office recorded 230 millimetres of rainfall in comparison with the average amount of rainfall expected for this month. The director of the Met's office, Ofa Fanono, told Radio and Television Tonga News this morning, since 5 p.m. yesterday evening until 2 a.m. early this morning, the total amount of rainfall recorded has exceeded the average amount of rainfall expected for March. Meanwhile, a heavy rain advisory is now in force for Tonga Tapu and Ewa. Tonga police have charged two young men alleged for starting a school brawl at the Nukalofa bus stop. The two accused are ex-students of Liahona High School. Salam of Fulivai with their story. Tonga police have charged two young men in relation to the school brawl yesterday evening. The acting superintendent of the Nukualofa police station, David Afifita, confirmed with radio and television Tonga News the fight broke out between students from Apifa Old College and Liahona High School. Inspector Fifita says the police have been dispatched to public areas in town to help avoid the problem. We asked help from other departments and today they have started lending out a helping hand by patrolling at the bus stops and public areas in Nukualofa. Meanwhile, staff of the Nukualofa police station are focusing on patrolling at the schools located in the rural area. Yesterday there was a school brawl at the bus stop and we took in all the students to the headquarters for questioning before charging the two young men who started the brawl. From what we see now, it seems like the ex-students are the active people who start the brawls. We are still calling on the, on the parents rather, 
and the people to cooperate in order to stop all these students' brawls. Inspector Fifita also calls on students and parents to take heed because police records are important for students' future. There is always a problem relating to students' police records because parents come and request to clear police records for their children who wishes to travel abroad for further studies. It will be more difficult if records are already ruined because for us here at the Ministry of Police, we want parents to be aware we do not have the authority to clear any police records. Meanwhile, Radio and Television Tonga News understands the principal of Up Before All College announced they will not release the students after school unless parents pick them up or the school will drop off the students. For Television Tonga News, I'm Salama Fulivai. And the Pacific Princess cruise ship had an emergency stopover at Vuna Wharf yesterday the to a medical emergency. Two passengers on board the ship needed urgent medical attention and one had to be taken off board due to the critical condition he was in. According to information from the Pacific Farmline Shipping Agency, the patient who was taken off board here in Okalofa was transported to Australia on an Australian air ambulance yesterday. Meanwhile, the medical assistance carried out by local health officials was conducted on the other patient who was still on board the ship. After conducting medical assistance, the ship continued on to its travelling destination. The Pacific Princess cruise was travelling from New Zealand and destined to Pangopango, and due to the urgent medical attention, they had to stop by Tonga. The Pacific Princess is an American cruise ship with 509 passengers on board, together with 374 crew members. Radio Tonga News has contacted Vala Hospital for further information on this emergency case, but no one was available. Meanwhile, the next cruise ship expected to visit Nukalofa is the Queen Victoria from the United Kingdom, which is expected to anchor at Vuna Wharf on the 17th of this month. That's the local scene for tonight. Stay watching for more news from around the region.